And now we have Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for this, uh, to the panelists for this great conversation. Um, I, let me start with um, our, the Deputy Secretary Turk. Um, because uh, in Nevada, uh, we have, and, and I want to thank also um, Kula Packer, they were part of this. We have sit, been having some red team hacking uh, going on at some of our universities to really assess what is happening here. Um, and let me address what everybody has talked about, the nefarious actors, the concerns here that um, AI systems can be tricked into providing instruction for causing physical harm. We've talked about that. We need to address it. I think we need to as well. I think those uh, red team hacking weekends are just as important. That's the manual piece of it. I think, Dr. Stevens, you talked about that we need to continue. And let me just highlight, because I know this weekend in particular that I am talking about in August in Las Vegas, it was designed around the White House's Office of Science and Technology Policies blueprint for AI Bill of Rights, and it's a competition that happens regularly. But my question here is one, yes, that needs to continue. Two, though, it also is building our cyber workforce. Is that right? I, th that's what's key to this as well, is that we need to have more engagement in building that workforce. I am proud that uh, UNLV was the host of this and will continue to be the host of these types of red team um, uh, hacking exercises, but it also is part of this idea that we have to create these uh, academic uh, centers of excellence in cyber defense, which UNLV is, a number of colleges are, and I think many of you are participating in those exercises. So I guess my question for you, Deputy Secretary Turk, is what else should we be doing to build out that workforce? I know there's work going on right now. Can you talk a little bit about the National Cyber Workforce and Education Strategy? How does that fit in to what is what we are trying to achieve with developing that cyber workforce, and what else do we need to be know, know here in Congress to support it? So the workforce piece is absolutely indispensable, and uh, I think there's a number of ways we need to come at it. We need to have a comprehensive and coherent strategy to it. First of all, if you want to have top talent come into the government for all the functions that we need to serve, you've got to have the cutting edge facilities and capabilities, right? Uh, the fact that we have the world's largest supercomputer is a pretty nice, uh, attractor for some of the top talent wanting to do cutting edge applications uh, along those lines. We've got the data, we've got the other pieces as well. So we have to have that infrastructure that's attractive for that top talent. Uh, the private sector is going to be able to pay folks an awful lot more than the government, even if we have bonuses and other kinds of attractive options, which we're trying to do. Uh, having the national lab apparatus gives us greater flexibility, candidly, than uh, if they were all federal government officials in the civil servant kind of sense. And so I think, and Professor Stevens can certainly talk about that, uh, using those partnerships. Argonne National Lab has a partnership with the University of Chicago, cutting edge university there. That helps in incredibly important ways to try to channel as much folks as we can uh, into the sector. But I think there's no way we have a successful AI strategy as a government, as a country, unless we have the workforce and the pipelines for the workforce, making sure that we've got that capability, not just in the private sector, incredibly important, but in the government uh, for all the functions that we need to have here. And as we're building out that workforce, and I'm going to ask Hewlett Packard if you can, because I know you were part of this, and, and you have a, Hewlett Packard has a Future of Work Academy for community and technical colleges, and they're involved with nearly, I, I want to say, 100 institutions um, and over 500 students. It, so it, the, the private sector is engaged, correct? Uh, absolutely. In fact, I'm glad you even uh, mentioned the centers of excellence because what we've found over you know, the years, honestly, decades, is um, you know, that, that really is a best practice for you know, once you have uh, you know, a center with, with, with maybe the compute capability, but you bring together, you know, those domain experts that are local to that institution. Uh, you know, you bring the universities that are local there, there as well. And it really does you allow, allow you to develop that local workforce. And as we think about AI and needing more and more of that expertise, it's a great best practice to, uh, again, help develop that workforce locally and, um, and just, you know, kind of grow and innovate together. And this is the opportunity, and maybe Dr. Susan can ask you to talk about this, because it is so hard for us in Congress to come back in and overlay a framework, and then actually try to uh, develop values and principles uh, in that framework. Uh, and this is an opportunity, as we are building out that cyber workforce, to grow those values and principles around AI. Is that, is that the goal here when we develop the curriculum? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the as AI becomes more powerful, um, as already been mentioned, it it, lo it it does two things. It for for somebody who knows how knows something, it empowers them to do more, right? So whether that's somebody who's defending our systems from a cybersecurity standpoint, it allows them to be more powerful, to affect more systems, to be smarter about how they can do defense. But it also empowers the other side to be uh, more aggressive in how they might attack systems. And we need to, to, of course, win those battles, and we have to create a community and a new way of thinking, an AI-enabled cyber strategy. Um, and I think that's what we have to start teaching. And of course, it's very attractive to the students. When you, when you talk about cybersecurity, they're already interested, but then you bring AI into it, they're super interested. So I think we have a big opportunity to bring more people into the workforce on this by attaching it to the AI agenda. Thank you. Ms. Puglisi? Um, and that's really an essential part, the workforce in the future competition. Um, and I might add that it's also, um, we've spent a lot of focus on looking at that PhD level or higher education level. It's really, what does it take to have that technically proficient that doesn't necessarily need a degree or need an advanced degree? Um, and I would venture to say that it's really important to start and begin that at the K through 12 level um, and really lay that groundwork um, because that is really what it's gonna take to compete. And that appears to me what is happening with what, what I see with the different competition, the different, whether it's right. the, the federal government, state, or, or private sector, that's the focus, yes, correct? Yes. And actually, um, CSET has done a lot of work um, around those topics and the um, importance of competitions, um, as well as looking at the demographics of that workforce. So we can Thank you. make sure that you have that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If we could, I'll tell you, we have two votes, two votes at 1145. We can keep our questions. Uh, I know we went to seven. We'll go back to five minutes if we can. If you need a little bit longer, fine. Uh, 